Fox 5 Health News and another case of a feared superbug resistant to a powerful antibiotic has been detected. Researchers say it was found in a patient who had surgery in an unnamed New York hospital last year. All right, joining us now is Fox 5 medical contributor, Dr. Devi Nampia Parampal. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Talk to us about this. Yeah. Well, this is concerning for a few reasons. So we hear about superbugs, right? And we worry about antibiotic resistance. But in this case, there's a couple things. So first of all, uh, this particular antibiotic resistance is to something called colistin, which is sort of one of our antibiotics of last resort, right? So it's not that the patient was necessarily resistant to every antibiotic out okay. there, but to one of our most powerful ones. And on top of that, what they found was a gene for it that can actually be transferred from bacteria to bacteria. So bacteria are a little different than us. They have something called plasmids. It's sort of like a shield where they can transfer this resistance back and forth across species. So the issue is, let's say that you have a bacterial infection that you're fighting. Well, maybe if that bacteria has this resistance, it can transfer it to some of the other healthier bacteria that you're not fighting in your body, oh, right? Wow. So from, let's say, your gut to your uh, whatever bacteria are near your sinuses, mm -hmm. right, or on your skin. So the problem is, if you have this spread of this gene, all of a sudden, all types of bacteria can suddenly get this resistance and become a problem for you. So that's that's actually the most alarming it aspect Sounds really of this. bad. It really does. Yeah. That's yeah, and then the other things that are frightening is that we don't routinely check for this, because this is the second case Case that we're hearing of in the US right so first of all a lot of hospitals don't know how to check for it second meaning they don't have labs that specifically check for it or tests that look for it uh, but they found it so then that makes you wonder well how many people are out there with this already but just aren't fighting it because they're not actually infected and in the midst of some type of battle they just might be carrying it around with them and it could spread to other in people. An undisclosed New York hospital. Wow. Yeah. All right, our second hot health topic. Scientists say they are finding more evidence linking head injuries to Parkinson's disease, especially if the trauma involves loss of consciousness. So there's a relationship between head injuries and different types of dementia. I mean, we've heard about it with football players, let's say, who yeah. have concussions. I mean, Parkinson's is a little different, so we're not sure of the exact relationship. Um, but Parkinson's, I mean, the main problem in Parkinson's is that you have a problem with your body's reward system. So, you know, we were talking about puppies once, mm -hmm. right? Anybody who has a puppy knows that if the puppy's doing something that you want, you reward it with a treat, right? And then you get that behavior again. And if the puppy's doing something you don't want, obviously, you don't reward that behavior with a treat. Well, the brain has its own reward system. So what it does is when your body does movements that it likes, it gives you that reward. Uh, it's a chemical called dopamine. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. you do things that the body doesn't like, it keeps that dopamine from you. So in Parkinson's, that reward system gets completely messed up. So people, when they want to do a movement, let's say walk, talk, swallow, or other things, um, the body actually doesn't give them the reward that it should give them. And wow. so they have trouble with those movements. Oh, and at the same time, Yeah, and at the same is. time, if they have abnormal movements, like a tremor, you'd want to stop that movement, right? But it's rewarding those movements. So you see a lot of abnormal movements as well in people in Parkinson's. So it's, at least starting off, it tends to be more of a motor problem or a movement problem. So we're not 100% sure why that relationship is there. But at least according to this pretty large study at an academic center, there seems to be some relationship between the head injury and then that reward system or motor system. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you explain this in a way that it's so it all of a sudden I can wrap my brain around it. It's oh, unbelievable. Thank you. No, really. It's <laughs> thanks, Dr. Thank Jen. you. A documentary. We could listen to more. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Appreciate it.